we must know the seven eras. Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 through 20. I thank the Lord who gives us hope in this dark age. Our hope is that everything would unfold as written in the book of Revelation, and to wait in faith that all the word of prophecy will be fulfilled. Much has been written in the book of Revelation. While theories and interpretations by scholars abound, it is still difficult to come across a work that is truly biblical in its approach. It is only by the grace of God that I, having spent countless hours studying and researching on the word of Revelation, am able to write this book. Even as I speak right now, my heart is filled with the truth of Revelation. The Holy Spirit has also filled me while I prepared my commentaries and sermons for this book. It is little surprise, then, that my heart would be abundantly filled by the hope for heaven and the glory of the millennial kingdom. I have also come to realize that how glorifying the martyrdom of the saints is for our Lord. Now, I am ready to share with you the word of wisdom that God has shown me and to help you to understand it. As I write this book on Revelation, the glory of God fills my heart evermore. In all frankness, I truly had not realized just how great the word of Revelation is. God showed John the world of Jesus Christ. What is meant by the opening words of Revelation of Jesus Christ? The dictionary definition of the word revelation is an act of revealing or communicating divine truth. The revelation of Jesus Christ then means the revealing of what would happen in the future in Jesus Christ. Put differently, God showed to John a servant of Jesus Christ and all the things that will come to pass in the end of time. Before we delve into the word of revelation, there is one thing that we must be sure of beforehand. That is, we must ascertain whether or not Revelation's written word of prophecy is symbolic or factual. All that is written in the book of Revelation is certainly factual, as through the visions that John saw, God has revealed to us in detail what will come to pass in this world. It is true that many scholars have put forward different theological theories and interpretations on the prophecies of Revelation. It is also true that these scholars' efforts have been to unveil the truth of Revelation to the best of their abilities. But such hypothetical propositions have done much harm to the Christendom as they did not conform to the truth of the Bible and only brought about confusion. For example, many conservative scholars have supported the so-called amillennialism. That is, they claim that there will be no millennial kingdom, but such opinions are far removed from the biblical truth. The thousand-year kingdom is factually recorded in chapter 20 of Revelation, where it is written that the saints will not only reign this kingdom, but also live with Christ for a thousand years. Chapter 21, on the other hand, tells us that after the millennial kingdom, the saints will inherit the new heaven and earth and live and reign with Christ for eternity. All these are facts. The Bible tells us that all these truths will be realized not as a symbolic fulfillment in the hearts of the believers, but as an actual fulfillment in history. But looking at the Christians today, we find that many of them appear to have little hope for the millennial kingdom. Were their claims of denial true? Would this not mean that God's promise to the believers would be only empty words? If there were no millennial kingdom waiting the believers, nor the new heaven and earth, then the faith of those who have been saved by believing in Jesus as their Savior would turn useless. On a related note, Many theologians and ministers today claim that the mark of 666 prophesied in Revelation is only symbolic. But make no mistake, when the day of this prophecy's fulfillment comes, the faith of those unfortunate souls who believed in such false claims will founder at once like a house built on sand. 
were those who believed in Jesus not to believe in the word of truth revealed to them in the Bible. They will be treated by God the same as the unbelievers. This can only mean that they not only do not know the gospel of the water and the spirit given by God, but that the Holy Spirit does not even dwell in their hearts. This is why their hearts have no hope for the millennial kingdom or the new heaven and earth that God has promised us. Even if they had believed in Jesus, they had not believed in him according to the written truth of the word of God. What is written in Revelation is the word of God that shows us what will absolutely and soon come to pass in this world. Chapters 2 and 3 of Revelation record the word of admonition to the seven churches in Asia. In them are found both the commendations and rebukes of God for the seven churches. In particular, God promised that the crown of life would be given to those who preserve in their faithfulness and overcome their tribulations. This means that there will surely be martyrdom waiting on the believers of the end time. The word of revelation is about the martyrdom of the saints, their resurrection and rapture, and the promise of the millennial kingdom and the new heaven and earth that God...